is that you are going to be muted. You are going to be off camera the entire time. Um, so if you um, have questions, we'll talk in a little bit about uh, the best way to get that information to us. Um, if you did join today via phone, um, where you called in with a phone number as opposed to joining um, through a website, um, we are going to ask that you go ahead at some point in the next 24 to 48 hours to just go ahead and shoot us an email at orientation at osu.edu um, just so that we have a record of you attending. If you join today through a web browser or through the um, Zoom app, you don't need to do any of that. We've already got you on record for that. So um, my name is Nicole Craven. I am a staff member with our first year experience office here at Ohio State. So we help to support a lot of incoming new students as they are making the transition either from high school to college um, or from a different institution into Ohio State. Um, so helping you to get kind of connected with the resources and the folks that are going to help you um, to find success and to be able to make that tr transition as smooth as possible. As I said, we will be together for the next 75 minutes or so, I have the pleasure of kind of serving as the as the MC to get you through some of the information that we're going to talk about today. Um, but before we dive into that information, I do just want to recognize that no matter where you are coming from, no matter what your academic journey has been thus far, um, we want to celebrate the fact that you are a Buckeye and that um, you are now here at Ohio State um, ready to continue your, your academic career. So I'm going to pop a a poll question up on the screen um, that's just kind of asking where you are in your academic journey, just so that you all can have a better sense of um, who was all on this call today. So uh, where are you in your academic journey? Ohio State is the first college or university you will attend. It is the second college or university you will attend. It's the third college or university you will attend. You've attended three or more institutions prior to Ohio State, or you're here for a reason other than completing your bachelor's degree. So um, if you are not able to see that poll question, no worries. Just think about how you would respond in your head and then I will go ahead and share those results. So it looks like we've heard from everyone at this point. So I'm gonna go ahead and end that poll, share those results. And it looks like over 70% of you who are on the call today, this is the second college or university that you will attend. Um, we do have some additional folks in those other categories, um, but the large majority of you, this is the, the second college you will attend. Um, and for the handful of you who um, this is your, it will be your first semester of college. Welcome. We are so excited to have you on board as well. I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing that poll. Um, you may have to exit out of it on your end of things. Um, but with that, I'm going to take a quick pause and turn things over to Amelia in our military and veteran services. So she's got a quick message to share with all of you who may be using um, any of the benefits associated with that. So Amelia, whenever you are ready, take it away. Good morning. Thank you, Nicole, and everybody from the FYI team. My name is Amelia Louie, she, her, her pronouns. I'm the Senior Academic Advisor for Military Connected Students here at The Ohio State University. If anybody on this call is military connected, so active duty, guard, reserve, veteran, or family member, so spouse or children of a service member, please um, come in contact with our office after you have registered for classes. Uh, the main point of our office is to help you with uh, your benefits, um, but we also have other resources if you're not using benefits that you can take advantage of. We can't start any of that process us until you have registered for classes. So I think this week is you'll go through this week or next week, you'll go, through, you'll register your classes. That's when you should come in contact with us. Our contact information is on the screen. When in doubt, just Google Ohio State Veterans and we can go out, we can go from there. Or you can email us at milvets at osu.edu. I'll hang around on the call, Nicole, in case there are any other questions. But other than that, I'm good to go. All right, thank you. Had to find my had to find my unmute button. Uh, thanks so much, Amelia. All right, so let's talk a little bit about what you can expect um, with our time together this morning. So I want to kind of highlight three things that you'll get out of this morning's program, and as we continue into the rest of the week. Um, so really, this time together is intended to be kind of an introduction to Ohio State. So in addition to some of the the resources and some of the information that I have to share, you'll also have a chance to 
hear from um, a representative from our transportation and traffic management. So they'll talk through how to kind of get around campus. Um, if you're looking to purchase a parking permit, we'll touch on that briefly during that period of time as well. Um, you'll also hear from a representative from our off-campus and commuter student engagement office. So folks who might be living off campus, folks who are commuting to campus, those pieces, um, you'll have a chance to learn more about the resources available. Um, and then we'll kind of wrap up that that our section or our time together this morning with a representative from our Office of Student Life. Um, so that student life portion of the presentation is going to talk a lot about campus involvement. Um, but I think one of the questions that we get most frequently from students is how do I get my Buck ID card? And our Buck ID card at Ohio State is the student identification card. Um, it's gonna be your tool for a lot of different things at Ohio State. You'll learn more about the ways that you can use that Buck ID card when we get to that student life portion. I wanna reassure you that that will be the time where we cover that Buck ID, how to obtain that Buck ID, um, and again, what you will use that Buck ID for. So if that is um, the, the main thing that you're here for today, rest assured that we will cover that later on in that portion. And then once we wrap up here this morning, you will have kind of the, the rest of the time here, as Amelia said, um, the rest of this week, maybe dipping into next week um, to connect with an academic advisor from your college or from your, from your program area. Um, and that'll be where you will register for courses for that spring semester. Now, academic advisors or those academic advising units um, have likely been communicating with you um, over the last couple of weeks at some point um, to let you know the process for um, getting that appointment. In some cases, it's just directly assigned to you. In other cases, you're asked to go in and kind of pick a time. Um, but that would have been communicated to you to your university email account. So it's that name.number at buckeyemail.osu.edu. Um, so I'm going to put a poll question up here in just a minute to um, kind of see if you all know what that advising appointment time is. Um, but in the meantime, I'm going to ask you to do a couple of things if it's not something that you're aware of. And the first one is to go into that Buckeye Mail account and double check your spam folder or your junk email just to see if something might have popped up there. Likely the, the subject heading would have said something al along the lines of orientation advising appointment or your orientation advising um, steps to, to register or something along those lines. So you should see that information kind of in that pop up. So I'm going to go ahead and submit our next poll question for y'all to answer. Um, so this one then is asking specifically whether you are aware of your advising appointment for this week or dipping into next week. So you're either saying, yes, I'm good or no help. And then we'll talk kind of process through that no help piece um, in just a moment. So I'm going to give that maybe another 10 seconds for folks to answer. Um, and then we'll again review those, those other pieces real quickly. Okay, this looks like we've got majority of folks who have answered. So I'm going to go ahead and end that poll. All right. So the good news is that over 80% of you know your advising appointment, know how to make that connection with the academic advisor from your college or from your college advising unit. So that is excellent. Um, for those of you who are unsure, if you are, this is the first time that you're hearing of that. Once again, one of the things I'm going to ask you to do is go back into your university email account and go ahead and double check that spam folder, make sure that there isn't something that necessarily popped up there. Um, if that still is, is not um, producing anything, you still can't know when that advising appointment is, go ahead and send us an email, orientation at osu.edu, um, and let us know that you are looking for your advising appointment time, and we will work on either letting you know that process for getting connected with an academic advisor from your college, um, or we'll go ahead and forward that information along to the advisors from your college um, to, to work on getting that connected. So again, um, if you're not sure about your advising appointment, go ahead and just send us an email so we can manage that on the back end. All right, I'm going to stop sharing that poll. I'm going to go ahead and X out of that. You might need to X out of it on your end. And then we will go ahead and kind of talk about protocol for this morning. So we've got two options for you to reach out to us behind the scenes. Um, the first one is using our chat function. And that's going to be really a, a more useful tool to kind of talk with us individually, or maybe you're having some technical issues. So things that are going to maybe relate to you and 
and only you. The reason that's helpful to do that in the chat is because we're able to see your name, whereas the Q&A is more of an anonymous feature. Um, so that chat function is going to be really helpful for us to kind of manage individual case by case questions that you might have. The Q&A function, we're going to go ahead and ask that you use that if you have questions specifically about content that is getting covered in this presentation. So either things that you need to follow up on that you're hearing one of our presenters share. Um, if you've got a specific question for a presenter, we can go ahead and read that question out loud um, and then the presenter can kind of answer it live. Um, or it could also be a question that lots of other people have. And so we want to make sure that we've got that information in that online running list of Q&A questions so that someone else can go back and find that answer or refer to that link. Um, there's also Google, right? So there's a lot of options for you you that if you just have that curiosity, um, it may be just a little bit quicker for you and easier for us behind the scenes if you can just go straight to Google and, and, and Google your question and get that answer that way. Um, so those are your options today. Again, we're going to try to answer those questions um, a, as quickly as possible. We'll answer them kind of in the order in which they come. There are absolutely more of you on this call than there are um, for us behind the scenes. So if for whatever reason you're not getting an answer in a timely manner, it may be possible that it kind of got overlooked in, in our stream of questions. So feel free to just pop back in um, so that we can kind of keep track of those things. All right, so that's the protocol for today during, during this particular session. I also want to encourage you to check out some additional information going forward. So we have a variety of videos videos that are available at our link go.osu.edu slash orientation videos. Um, and those are going to walk you through a lot of those business processes of being a student at Ohio State. So some of the things that you need to know in order to kind of take care of selecting or waiving your student health insurance, um, viewing your financial aid, understanding your statement of account, which is what we call the bill here at Ohio State, um, managing that buck ID, which again, we'll talk about a little bit later in the program, um, adding a class, all of those pieces, the things that you may not have to do right away in November, but you will need to do at some point um, before you start classes with us in January. So refer to that later on so that you have a better sense of, of some of the things that can be helpful for you um, as you manage all of those behind the scenes aspects of being Buckeye. Another really useful tool for you is what we refer to as the Ohio State app. There's a couple different apps that are affiliated with Ohio State in your app store, whether that's through iOS or the Android or Google store. Um, the one that you're specifically looking for has kind of the block O icon on it. The other one is going to have the athletic symbol on it. That one also is a helpful app, but this one is going to be particularly helpful as you start to navigate Ohio State. So if you log in with your name dot number and password, um, it'll give you information that is specific to you. So you'll see your class schedule, you'll see um, what you owe, you'll see your buck ID balance, you'll see um, some upcoming th uh, due dates through your Carmen course, all of those things kind of pop up through that Ohio State app. Um, you'll learn in just a few minutes from our transportation and traffic management representative that it's also connected to our campus area bus service. So you can kind of see when buses are coming um, um, and knowing when those are going to, what, what those routes are. So definitely highly recommend the Ohio State mobile app. If it's not something that you've already downloaded, feel free to do that. There's also a great map feature that is part of that that is associated with GPS. So it can help you figure out where you're going, where you need to be, all of those kinds of pieces. All right, I'm also gonna talk really quickly about just some, some upcoming dates and deadlines that might just be good to note, maybe take a screen capture of this or make a note to come back to this slide a little bit later on. Um, just things to keep in mind as we start through um, the end of this semester going into that spring semester. I will also say that all of these dates and deadlines um, come directly from our University Registrar's website, which you can see at the bottom of that screen there, registrar.osu.edu. EDU. So if for whatever reason um, you are unable to take this screen capture or you need to go back and refer to future dates, um, they've kind of got it 
for like five to 10 years out. So you can kind of know what those dates are if you're trying to calculate long-term plans. Um, so just to note, most of what you see on here are dates that are relevant to when classes um, are held versus not held when the university is open versus not open. Um, some dates and deadlines associated to, to fee payments, to registration dates, um, final exam schedules, all of those types of things. So absolutely take a look at this when you've got some time. And with that, we're going to go ahead and jump into um, some key resources to know. So I've got a variety of different things that I'm going to kind of walk through in our next little bit of time together. A lot of these resources are either things that we know who um, new students who have come before you have said, hey, this was a game changer for me. This was super helpful as I was starting to, to get acclimated to Ohio State. Or they'd come back and say, gosh, I wish I had taken advantage of this in my first semester or in my first year as I was making the transition to Ohio State. So they, they kind of fall into two categories. Um, as we walk through these things, you'll see kind of a whole list of websites on each of the pages. And that's really because I'm going to do a very high level overview. If you are looking for more of a deep dive into any of these resources, I encourage you to just jot down those websites or go back to visit them at a later time um, so that you can know a little bit more about what we're talking about. Okay, so the first resource that I'm going to talk to is under this umbrella of tutoring and the Dennis Learning Center. So at Ohio State, we are flush with resources, which means that we've got lots of really specific tutoring for particular subjects. So we have the Math and Statistics Learning Center for any of those math or, math or stats classes that you might be taking. Um, the Writing Center for any classes that you might be taking where you're doing a lot of writing. Um, we have a chemistry learning resource room for anyone who's taking any of our general chemistry courses. Um, the way that you would access those resources, though, looks a little bit different depending on what resource you're going after. So um, the, the blessing and the curse is that we've got tons of resources, but because we are a little bit of a, of a larger institution, um, the navigation of that resource can be a little bit tricky. Um, and then we've got the Dennis Learning Center, and the Dennis Learning Center has academic coaches. And so our academic coaches are going to be specifically trained in helping you to navigate some of those other pieces that might be getting in the way of having you um, be successful in the classroom. It may not necessarily be to the knowledge or to the content of the class, the, the mastery of those pieces, um, but it may be the study skills that are around that or test taking anxiety or stress management, some of those pieces. You can meet with an academic coach, they can kind of talk you through those pieces. So definitely check out our tutoring resources, our academic coaches through the Dennis Learning Center. Um, whether you took advantage of those at your previous institution, if you are transferring here, um, or are looking to maybe kind of have that leg up, what we know from our students is that our most successful students at Ohio State are the ones that are using these resources proactively. So they're using it in advance of falling behind in the class or maybe not performing as they had hoped on a midterm um, or a project. All right. Next resource that's going to drop in is our university libraries. Um, we have more than a dozen libraries right here on the Columbus campus for Ohio State. Um, and those libraries can be accessed pretty much um, by any student at any time. They are not only great to access the resources available in the library, but they are really great study spaces for our students as well. The one that you see on the screen here are showing our stacks in the Thompson Library. That is our, our primary main library on campus. It anchors the oval, the big green space in the middle of campus, kind of on the west end of that oval. So um, a pretty identifiable, um, notable building on campus. Um, the other library that a lot of our students will, will frequent is our 18th Avenue Library. And that's because that's a library that is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You will need to access that library after hours um, with your Buck ID card. So lots of great study spaces on campus, lots of ways to use that library to be successful as a student here. Buckeye Careers is the next resource that I will talk through. Um, we do have um, Buckeye Careers, and then we also have career services within each of the colleges. So our Buckeye Careers is going to be um, more of a, of a broad serving resource for our students. So this would be where you're going if you were interested in kind of career exploration or maybe starting to connect what you want to major in with what you want to do for the rest of your life or vice versa, what you want to do for the rest of your life and how that relates 
relates to a major. Um, they can also help with uh, resume writing, interview skills, cover letters, um, kind of negotiating that first job after grads or after college, those types of pieces. Um, that's going to be really helpful for Buckeye careers. Bucket Careers also manages Handshake, and Handshake may have been something that you had at your previous institution, um, but it is a online kind of job board that is available only to Ohio State students um, and employers who are looking to hire Ohio State students. Um, so you would create an account through handshake.osu.edu. You can post as much information about yourself to that account. Employers then can post their job opportunities, whether that's summer in internships, part-time jobs while you're here, post-graduation jobs, all of those types of things. They will post those things there and then you can kind of interface and interact with them through that through that Handshake website. Um, so again, definitely something to check out um, if you're looking for part-time, full-time employment, summer opportunities, et cetera. Um, and then I mentioned also that within each individual college, they have their own career services office. So if you were Let's say in the College of Business, you would make makes um, use of the Fisher College of Business Career Services Office, and they're going to be a little bit more tuned in to the particular industry that you're going into. So they might have some different recommendations for how to format your resume, or they may have some additional connections to alumni who you could go shadow or or um, connect with as you are exploring those job opportunities. Um, most of our colleges, along with um, um, Buckeye Careers, they, ha they host um, periodic uh, career fairs as well that are going to be helpful for you as you're looking for summer internships, as you're looking for post-graduation employment. All right. Uh, the next area that dropped on here, this is three different... Um, centers or three different areas within our campus um, that all kind of fall under this umbrella of health and wellness. So the Student Health Services, the Student Wellness Center, and Counseling and Consultation Service. So I'll talk about all three of them really quickly. So Student Health Services is going to be, for all intents and purposes, a doctor's office. So they are going to be care uh, uh, most concerned about kind of your um, diagnostic and preventative physical health. Um, there's also a pharmacy attached to that. They're also going to make referrals to specialists in the area if you need that information. But in many of the same ways that you would go to your primary care physician or some of those typical specialists that, that we often see on an annual basis, you can get that through student health services. Um, if you're using the health insurance provided by Ohio State, that's going to be an automatic connection. Anyone else that's using um, non-Ohio State insurance, you are still able to access those student health services. It's just how it, um, the, the payment piece of that is going to look a little different depending on what your health insurance looks like. Um, so again, student health services is like your doctor's office. Student wellness center is going to be more concerned about kind of holistic wellness and well-being and how those things influence and impact you as a student at Ohio State. So they use the 10 dimensions of wellness and kind of do a lot of outreach and programming and support um, that focus on helping you to be holistically well. So how does your financial wellness interface with your intellectual wellness and how does your intellectual wellness interface with your emotional wellness and how does your emotional wellness um, connect with your digital wellness so all of those kinds of pieces that's what our student wellness center does and then counseling and consultation service is our counseling center so they are going to be most concerned with your mental health and well-being so in addition to one-on-one -on -one counseling group counseling they do um, a lot of one-off programming they do a lot of workshops that are helping our students to be connected. And then they also will make referrals to specialists or community um, providers in our area. That's where that consultation part comes in for CCS. All right, public safety, want to talk about that really quickly. We are a large institution located within a large metropolitan area, so we definitely have some security risks associated with both of those factors, but I think our Department of Public Safety does a really nice job of keeping students informed about what's happening on our campus and in our surrounding area, as well as places and spaces to stay safe, be safe, um, things that you can take on yourself as a way of kind of managing that safety, as well as transparency about what the university is doing. So I encourage you to check out their website. 
DPS, so Department of Public Safety, dps.osu.edu. Um, all students who have provided a cell phone number to the university are automatically enrolled in what's called Buckeye Alert. So that's going to be that text messaging system um, that notifies you of any sort of campus emergency. You can also sign up additional folks. So if you've got a family member or um, someone else who would benefit from having that information, they also can be part of Buckeye Alert. That alert will come to them after um, it has come to the entire campus community. All right, Buckeye Link is likely something that you are already familiar with because you would have interacted with it throughout the admissions process for Ohio State. Um, but Buckeye Link is kind of our one-stop shop for all of those business pieces of being a student. Um, so if you are coming from an institution where maybe you have a registrar's office and a financial aid office and a bursar's office, all of those things are kind of combined into one um, when you can kind of get that centralized support there. So there's three quick ways for you to interact with Buckeye Link. The first one is through their web portal, which is buckeyelink.osu.edu. That's probably something that you've gone to a lot. You can see all the different paths and things that you would need to access from there. There's a great search feature. If you're not really sure what you're looking for, you can type in some keywords. Um, then you also can log into your personal Buckeye Link. So your Buckeye Link page, that's going to be where you can see your statement of account, where you register for classes, where you can update your personal information. All of those kinds of pieces are going to be in your Buckeye link. And then if for whatever reason you can't get your question answered or can't manage um, the, the pieces of being a student at Ohio State online, you can also connect with Buckeye link staff in person, over the phone, or via email. They're located on the first floor of the Student Academic Services Building. That's the building that you see right there on, on um, the slide there over on North Campus. Um, you can also email them at buckeyelink at osu.edu or give them a call. That information for that contact um, is on the Buckeye Link website. All right, and then lastly, I'm going to talk really quickly about academic advising at Ohio State. You'll have a chance to learn more about how academic advising works at Ohio State when you connect with an advisor um, later this week to register for classes. Um, but I cannot speak highly enough about academic advisors here. I think that they are an underutilized resource, frankly, especially for um, students who are transferring to the, to the university. Um, they are going to be super helpful in making sure that you're staying on track towards a timely degree. Um, they can make really great recommendations for maybe potential minors that, that would be a good complement to whatever you're majoring in. Um, they can talk you through so how some of those classes might overlap to, to connect with more than um, one gen ed requirements, those types of things. And they are also a really great referral to other resources um, and references across campus. So um, even if it is not a requirement for you or of your major to meet with an academic advisor once a semester, that is my general recommendation is that you do that at least once a semester. All right, that was a lot of information in a short period of time. I'm going to take a quick pause here just to make sure that I'm not seeing anything in the chat or the Q&A that hasn't already been answered. And it looks like we are on track with those things. So I'm going to go ahead and turn things over to Susan from our Department of Transportation and Traffic Management. So Susan, go ahead and take it away. Thank you, Nicole. Good morning, Buckeyes. My name is Susan Boyarski-Markle, and I work for Transportation and Traffic Management. So that's all the different options to get you around campus and even to the city itself, Columbus. Our department manages CABS, which is short for Campus um, Area Bus Service. Uh, we also manage a paratransit service for those with temporary or permanent disabilities who need access around campus. We have a charter bus service, so if you belong to a group on campus and need to get off campus for some reason, we can charter a bus for you. Uh, we manage the shared mobility device program. So those are the scooters or bicycles that you can temporarily uh, rent here on campus. And also we manage the biking here on campus. So I always encourage you, if you ever have a question, reach out to our department, we're happy to assist you. If you're gonna be a regular user on CABS, I would encourage you to follow us on X or Twitter. Um, that way, if we have an emergency route change and accident happens on campus and we have to reroute a bus very quickly, we will post that information on there. And also, I just want to let you know everything I present here, because I'm going to do it very quickly, um, is available on our website. So if you have any questions, you're welcome to reach out to me even afterwards or go on our website for information. 
Our campus area bus service is free to ride. Anybody can ride it. So if you have friends and family visiting you here on campus, they can also hop on and ride for free. Um, no buck ID to, D is going to be needed here on the cab service. Now, if you're going to be using the city bus service, which is called CODA, you will need the buck ID, and I'll explain that here in just a moment. Um, one great thing here for Ohio State users, we have uh, we're on the Ohio State mobile app. So if you are at a bus stop, you want to see when the bus that you are going to be riding is coming, you can pull that up on the app. You can actually see it in real time going around campus, so you'll know when it's coming to your bus stop. Real quick here, I want to show you the overall campus map for a bus service. I know that looks really intimidating, um, but I just wanted to give you a quick overview just to let you know, hey, we can get you all across campus. So you can see our stadium there in the middle of that map. Um, just for some quick reference points, if you're going to be a commuter here on campus, a lot of the commuters will use that pink lot up there at the top of the screen. That's called the Buckeye lot. Um, for those that are living on campus and who may want to remotely store their vehicle, that is the light blue lot on the bottom left-hand corner. So again, just showing you this overall route map, route map just to let you know we can get you all across campus. Couple specific route information for routes that a lot of students use. Um, our first one is called the Buckeye Express. This one services that Buckeye remote uh, uh, lot that a lot of transfer students will use, or I'm sorry, a lot of commuter students will use to get back and forth to the commuter parking lot. It serves that Buckeye lot, but it also serves the Midwest campus, north and east side of campus on campus. It goes on a, uh, a regular clock wise um, route and it services the um, different stops every seven minutes between 7 a.m. and 6 p.m. and then every 15 minutes from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. Another route that serves that Buckeye lot again is called the Campus Loop South and the difference here in this lot, this route, I'm sorry, um, is actually it goes in a counterclockwise uh, route service and it actually drops down to the south part of campus first. So it'll hit south campus, the medical area, and then it'll swing back up around and serve the east and north area of campus. Again, you could pick it up at any stop, get to the stop you need to go to, you don't have to ride that full route. Finally, another uh, route that's popular with students is the Campus Connector. So if you have anything out on the west side of campus, or if you're going to be parking in that remote overnight lot, this is the route that you'll want to take. It services the west campus area, west of State Route 315, and then will bring you on to central campus, serving the northeast and south side of campus. Couple rider tips when you're riding the buses. Um, don't rush on the bus when uh, it's first stops. There's gonna be people getting off the bus. So let them go ahead and exit and then go ahead and get on the bus. Uh, for safety reasons, we can only load and unload at a bus stop. So you can't flag somebody down mid route. They're, they're not gonna be able to stop for you. You're not gonna need to press that safety bar or uh, pull on the chain. We stop at all route stops on that route. So you won't have to notify the driver that you would like to get off. And then for quicker and loading and unloading of the buses, if you could try to load on the front door and exit through the back door, it just makes a little more efficient loading and unloading of the buses. We have uh, cabs on demand service. So that's an additional transportation service available to you. Um, it's not a shuttle service and it doesn't provide a regular route, but it's more the ability to schedule a ride from one location on campus to the next location. We have a daytime service, which runs from 7 a.m. to 9 p.m., and an uh, overnight service from 9 p.m. to 7 a.m., and I'll go over those differences here with you in just a moment. If you would like to utilize the service, you're going to need to download the Trip Shop app. Again, this is all on our website and all that information is available to you. This will allow you to schedule a ride, and it'll also be able to see this uh, route coming to you in real time. And this service is available both during the weekdays and the weekends. For the daytime on-demand camp service, um, we have four different central campus stops. Those that are in red, which are the mid uh, RPAC, Mid Tower, Stillman Hall, and Doan Hall areas. And then you'll see a lot of black stops, which are west of the Olentangy River Road. And the way the service works during the day is that you can pick it up um, from one of the red stops here on campus, on central campus, and go to any of the black stops on campus. You could pick it from any of the black stops and go to the red stops on campus or you can go in between the black stops. The only thing here is you cannot go between the red stops. And the reason for that is these stops here are locations on campus that our regular shuttle service doesn't provide um, close access. So we're trying to get you from central campus to the different remote areas on campus or back again. Now our overnight service is a little different. 
It operates again from 9 p.m. to 7 a.m. And this kind of opens up the entire campus. So the stops that you saw, plus many, many more are added to that list. And it's a point-to-point -point service here on campus. So say, for example, you had a class in Denny Hall. It ended at 9.30. You had parked in the Carmack 2 parking lot. What you would do is go on the TripStop app, actually locate that information, say that I want to go from um, Denny Hall to Carmack 2. It would tell you there, as you can see in the description, where you need to go stand to pick it up and where it's going to drop you off. So this is a more point-to-point -point service. And again, you can actually watch this on your phone um, coming to pick you up. You'll know when it's coming. So it's great overnight service for you on campus. We offer a prayer transit service on campus, which is a door-to-door uh, -door transportation service for those with temporary or permanent disabilities. For example, if you're on crutches temporarily and you need access to get to the different classes on campus, you can reach out to us and we can set up a schedule with you according to your classes and we can get you to your different classes throughout the day. So if this is a service that can assist you, I encourage you to reach out to our paratransit service either by email or phone, and they'll assist you with getting set up for this service. We have a lift ride smart program here at Ohio State, and this offers eligible students discounted rides inside the university designated service area, which you can see here on your screen between the hours of 7 p.m. and 7 a.m. Ohio State will contribute $4 per ride, and then the remainder is paid by the rider. So you should be receiving an email invite with this information. You could also just download the Lyft app on your smartphone, link your Ohio State username, your email account, and your password to this account, and it will provide that discount to you. Another option to get around the, the um, Central Ohio area is called CODA, which I mentioned earlier. That's the Central Ohio Transit Authority. That's the bus service for the Columbus Central area. Um, it's a great option to get you downtown. So if you want to go see some shows or get some restaurants downtown, it's a great option to get you all around the Central Ohio area. They have an online route planner so you to assist you on what route or routes that you need to utilize to get to your destination. You'll simply put in your starting address, your ending address, and it will provide that information of what bus route you need to take. You already pay a $13.50 per semester fee as part of your, um, I'm sorry, CODA fee as part of your fees for the semester. So it, you're already paid for it. It's free to ride. You'll just need to take your buck ID when you enter the bus, swipe it and it'll provide you access to ride during that semester. If you do have friends and family getting on though, it is not included in this service. We also have some scooters on campus. I forgot to mention here real quick. Um, just make sure you please park those next to bike racks if available. Biking on campus, a lot of students will utilize that here on campus. Great resource um, getting around campus, but just want to make sure you know, first and foremost, please always secure your, like, uh, securely lock your bike to one of the bike racks on campus. Don't lock it to anything else, such as a tree or fence. It could be removed. Um, there are a limited number of bike lockers if you're interested. I'm located up on North Campus. If that's something you're interested in, you can always reach out to our department. Safety first when you ride your bikes. Uh, make sure you're wearing a helmet. Make sure that the bike's in working order. If you need some assistance with the bike in working order, we have what's called the Buckeye Bike Hub here on campus. They will either let you uh, utilize tools so you can work on your bicycle or they can work on it for you. They can replace, you know, the brake system. They can they tune up the bicycle for you. Um, if you're leaving for the summer, please make sure you take your bicycle with you. Uh, we do have a service that you can store your bike for free over the summer, but it's a good idea to, to go ahead and take that bicycle with you if you're not gonna be here over the summer. A few mobility safety tips here also. Campus is always a very busy place. There's a lot of people moving around. Please just make sure you're always aware of your surroundings. Um, again, I'll mention the helmet if you're riding a scooter or a bicycle. Um, prior to operating a scooter, if you wanna rent one of those, do a pre-ride safety check, make sure those brakes are working. Um, and just one very important thing I wanna mention, if you're utilizing a bicycle or a scooter on campus, please do not block any of the disability access ways or any of the um, sidewalks on campus. We need to keep those open for safety reasons. OSU Go is a great way to get some information about the large campus events. So for football games or if we have big stadium events, we will post information here um, and we will send a text out to you to let you know, heads up, there's this happening on campus today. You may need some extra time getting to campus. So if this is something you're interested in, you might wanna take a quick snapshot. Again, it's on our website if you like it, but you go to um, OSU, text OSU Go uh, 67283. 
And then finally, really quickly, one thing that I know a lot of people are very interested in, if you're going to have a vehicle on campus, you're going to need a parking permit or you need to pay to park in a pay facility. Campus Park is the name of the vendor that operates parking here on campus. Um, they will sell the parking permits to you. Uh, their website's here, osu.campuspark, and that's parkwithac.com. They have a great tool to help you figure out what permit you're available to purchase um, and compare different options. So some of you might have different options. So the, the, the longer you're here, the higher in rank you are, higher, you know, junior, senior, you'll have more parking options available to you. So the um, tool that lets you do that here is called the permit comparison tool. Um, what you do is you put your rank, which is based on your credit hours and your resident status. So are you a commuter or are you living on campus? And it'll let you see what permit or permits are available to you. Um, I would encourage you to reach out to them if you have any questions. Go ahead and take a look at this. One thing I will let you know, though, if you sign in, um, they're not going to have your information until after you schedule for classes. So once you schedule for classes, you'll be able to log into their website, see the information available to you. It'll, it'll actually show what permits are available to you. But please wait for a couple of days after you schedule for classes for that information to be available. So I'm going to pause here real quick. Is anybody has any questions for me? Yep, Susan, we've got a couple of questions in the Q&A. Um, so the first question is, do students have CODA benefits during the summer term if they are not registered for summer classes? They do not, but CODA offers a special program during the summer where they offer um, the price to ride, which I believe is $62 for a month. They offer that for the entire summer. So they'll let you buy a pass that I think starts in May and ends in September, and you can ride CODA that entire time for $62. You'll just need to purchase that at the CODA um, office, which is downtown. Perfect. All right. And then second question, um, if you have a state of Ohio disability placard, what does that do in terms of your options for parking on campus? So that will allow you to have disability parking here on campus. What you'll need to do is send the registration information to um, Campus Park. Um, they have a customer service department um, email on their website. So you'll email that information to them, they will link that to your account and that'll open up the disability parking permit options to you. All right, those seem to be the only questions that we've got right now. So I will go ahead and turn things over to our next speaker, Rachel from Off Campus and Community Student Engagement, whenever you're ready. Hi everyone, thank you, Nicole. Um, welcome everyone to The Ohio State University. My name is Rachel Demoy, and I am part of Willie J. Young Sr. Off-Campus and Commuter Student Engagement. So on this next slide, you will see our contact information. We are located in the Ohio Union up on the third floor in suite 3106. Uh, we're just across from the Buck ID office if you're picking up your student ID here on campus. We have walk-in hours throughout the week. Uh, we're open Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. during normal semester hours. Um, one thing I do want to point out is our website, which is offcampus.osu.edu. This has virtually all of the information and important resources on it that I'll touch on throughout the presentation today. And then you can also follow us on social media at, under, at offcampus underscore OSU. We post a lot of different reminders, uh, road closures, where events are going to be with free food. So that's really, really good to check out. I think if that starts when we go. Um, so off campus and commuter student engagement can assist you in many ways. As I mentioned a minute ago, our website has several applications that will support you in your time living off campus and commuting. Uh, we do have an online off campus housing network housing search where you can stay connected, where we stay connected with our local area property owners who choose to list their properties on our website. Um, and on that housing search, you can be as general or as specific as you want to be when searching for a place to live. Um, we have both walking distance and driving distance to campus all in one place, so that's super convenient to check out. 
In addition, we also have an online roommate search that allows you to meet potential roommates virtually. Um, in order to use this service, we do uh, require a login with your OSU username and password, and then you can either look at ads that have already been created, or you can post an ad of your own. Um, in order to contact individuals who have ads, uh, we do have a messaging platform built right into the site, so you don't need to exchange contact information until you're ready to do so. Um, we do also offer housing consultations for more personalized support. So if there are specific needs that you have that aren't being met by the off-campus housing network housing search, please feel free to reach out to our office to schedule one of those consultations. And then lastly, we would encourage all of you to download our off-campus living guide on our website. This offers tips and tools to support your off-campus living experience, starting with that initial search all the way through moving out and getting that security deposit back. Um, and then we do also have a commuting resource guide as well that offers resources around campus and some helpful tips on how to improve your commute. So next, I want to quickly highlight Student Legal Services. Um, so Student Legal Services is located right across from Ohio State at 20 East 11th Avenue, and their website is studentlegal.osu.edu. Uh, Student Legal Services is a great resource. They are a nonprofit law office that provides legal advice, representation, and education and resources to Ohio State students. So when you're paying your fees, you are actually paying a $40 fee for these services. So make sure you take advantage of them. Um, one way that you're able to utilize their services is if you're planning to sign a lease for an apartment or a house off campus. Student Legal Services does provide free lease reviews as long as you've opted into that $40 fee. Um, and we would strongly encourage you to contact Student Legal Services before signing your lease so you understand any clauses um, or if there are any unenforceable clauses in your lease, they can help you draft any verbal agreements with your property owners into that lease as well. Certainly they can assist in several other ways. So please make sure that you're utilizing their services throughout your time at Ohio State. And then in terms of having a successful off-campus experience, one of our suggestions is getting to know your community ambassador. Community ambassadors are fellow Ohio State students who also live in the neighborhood. Uh, their role is really to serve as your go-to person in the university district. Um, they can help you get involved, stay engaged uh, in the community, meet your neighbors, uh, know what events are happening off campus, and just make sure that you're staying connected. Community ambassadors also help facilitate BLOCK. Um, this is our newsletter for off-campus and commuter students. BLOCK, B-L-O-C, stands for Buckeyes Living Off Campus. Uh, to sign up for that newsletter, just go to go.osu.edu slash BLOCK newsletter. Um, and then we also have off-campus living sessions throughout the semester to prepare for your move off campus. If you want some more specific information about renting in Columbus or how to go about the off-campus housing search, these are really great sessions to attend. We do have a couple left for the semester. Um, if you go to go.osu.edu slash off-campus living sessions, that will give you everything that you need to know. So next, I wanna talk about some services that we have for those of you who will be commuting. Um, maybe you'll be driving in, taking public transportation, or even biking from a little bit further away. Um, we do have a commuter hub for commuter students on the third floor of the Ohio Union. Here, you will find our commuter lounge, commuter lockers, and commuter kitchen. The yeah. commuter lounge you don't need any special access for, and it is open as long as the Ohio Union is open. It is a great place to study, hang out in between classes, and I often see a lot of students taking naps in there too throughout the week. 
Um, the commuter lockers are a free resource that you're able to reserve on the first day of classes each semester at 8 a.m. So if you're able to reserve the locker, that space will be yours for the entire semester. We provide you with the lock and access on your Buck ID into the locker room. Um, and then you'll just return your lock at the end of the semester. The commuter kitchen is connected to the lounge and gives you a space to keep your meals while you're in classes or in student organization meetings. We have two large refrigerators, lots of cabinet space. There's even a hot water spigot for like oatmeal or ramen or tea. Um, to get access to the commuter kitchen, you just need to visit our office at 3106 in the Ohio Union once you are on campus. Um, so our office also works with several different campus and community partners proactively to address safety of our students. Uh, one way we do this is by providing students with free safety devices. Uh, we have uh, window and door alarms and personal safety alarms that are known as birdies. Um, and these alarms are just ways to proactively look out for your own safety. To obtain these safety devices, you can visit our office on the third floor of the Union. Whether you're living off campus, commuting to campus, we encourage all students to utilize these free devices. And if you pick up a birdie and don't need the window and door alarms until maybe next year, you're always welcome to come back and get as many devices as you need. And then um, we do hire students throughout the year. Uh, we often have work study and regular student employment positions available for administrative associates and our community ambassadors. We offer flexible schedules around your classes and many opportunities to learn those transferable skills that you can take with you into your career. So if you're interested or looking for an on-campus job, please visit go.osu.edu slash OC CSC hiring, or you can visit our website to learn more about our hiring timelines. And then lastly, we do have a lot of fun events throughout the year. Um, that's just a small snapshot of some of our key services that I wanted to point out to you today. Um, you can always keep up with our events and services on our website, offcampus.osu.edu, or by following us on social media at offcampus underscore OSU. Uh, but I'll go ahead and pause to see if there are any other questions for me. Thank you all for listening. All right, Rachel, I am not seeing any questions in the Q&A or the chat that haven't already been answered. So in the interest of time, we're going to go ahead and move on to our last section. So uh, Dr. Couch, whenever you are ready, take it away. Well, thank you so much, Nicole, and good morning, everyone. I bring greetings on behalf of the Office of Student Life, which is made up of several different departments, about 40 of them, actually. I've uh, got a, a few examples here on the screen to share with you. Um, these are things like housing and dining, uh, health services, um, off-campus and commuter student engagement, who you just heard from, but also things like recreational sports and uh, parent and family relations as well. So we uh, provide resources for you in your lives outside the classroom, hoping to uh, give you whatever you need, access to resources to help you be as successful as you can possibly be at Ohio State. So we're in the home stretch for today's presentation. Um, I have a number of things that I wanna share with you. The first one is, is maybe the, the most important one, and that is this concept of getting involved on campus. We have an expectation of every Ohio State student that you're getting meaningfully involved in at least one thing in addition to your classwork. And whether you are starting your, your career, uh, your college career here in the spring semester, or you are continuing it, after transferring from another institution, uh, please know how important getting involved is to your overall success. We, we generally find that students who are involved tend to perform better academically. They're making connections with other people uh, who can provide a network of support. They're often making connections to faculty and staff who can serve as advisors and then ultimately recommenders for 
grad school and scholarships and, and jobs after after graduation. So those are just a, a few of the benefits. But one of the things that I often hear from incoming students is that you're just afraid you're not going to have enough time. You're, you're concerned with fitting everything in. So I wanted to address that by showing you a sample schedule that belongs to a fictional student. Um, this is not going to look exactly like your schedule, but for the purposes of our, our demonstration this morning, I wanted to run through a few things. So uh, other than uh, eating and, and breathing, sleep is probably the most important fundamental human need that we all have. So let's get an average of seven hours of sleep per night on the schedule. I know that might be a, a reach for some of you, but on average, um, you can get in that six to eight hour range. Your well-being and just about every other aspect of your life uh, is, is so much better. So I wanted to start with that. Now, let's put an hour on this schedule in the morning for getting ready and eating breakfast, an hour for lunch, and an hour for dinner. Next, let's get a class schedule on this uh, on this sample here. So 15 credit hour course load um, translates to about 15 real-time hours in the classroom or in the lab each week. And uh, that 15 credit hour course load is, is on average what you would need in order to, to graduate in four years. Most degree programs uh, and our general education requirements can, can be fit into um, those eight 15 credit hour semesters. So uh, you may need to take more or less than that based on your transfer credit situation or credits you've already earned, but this is the average. And the study skills experts tell us that if you wanna be as successful as you can be in those classes, then we recommend you put two hours of study time in for every one hour of class that you have. So on this sample schedule, that looks like 30 hours of studying, which may be more necessary around midterm and final exam time or just otherwise busy weeks. But you may find uh, as you get deeper into your, uh, your major course of study that you're going to need every bit of that time uh, to complete your assignments and, and uh, just prepare for class. Next, uh, let's put some travel time on the schedule here. Oh, no, let's start with a job. I just, Shame on me for not prioritizing this. I know a lot of you are um, wanting or needing to work to earn some money. Um, if you are in that situation where you want to work while you're in school, we really strongly recommend that you consider an on-campus job. Um, students who are involved in an on-campus job, when I say we have an expectation that you're getting involved, being employed on campus is an excellent way to do that. Plus, obviously, you're getting paid. But our on-campus employers are typically a lot more flexible with your class schedules. Um, some jobs may allow you to even complete homework while on the job. Uh, they, they may not require your undivided attention for every moment that you're clocked in. So there, there are uh, some really, really good advantages in addition to the convenience of those locations, uh, all the different places where jobs can be found on campus. I'll, I'll share in a moment how you can look for those. Okay, now let's talk about traveling around campus. It does take a while whether you are walking from an off-campus residence or on-campus residence, or you are commuting, uh, driving in and parking, uh, and then taking the bus to the central part of campus, it, it does take a while. So I've represented that as about an hour per day uh, on the sample schedule. Now let's put some free time in here. Um, just four hours a day to do absolutely nothing, if that's what you need to do to relax, stay connected with friends and family at home, maybe explore this great city that we live in or that you will be living in here in Columbus, uh, working out, just having either social time or downtime. It's really important to your well-being and know that there's plenty of time in an average day for you to do that. Even when we've added all that in, that leaves up to 10 hours a week to be involved in things like student organizations or volunteer service, <clears throat> leadership development, attending campus events, Things that uh, perhaps up to this point in your academic careers, whether in high school or at another uh, college, uh, that you have learned to prioritize and, and manage uh, along with the other things competing for your time. So let's talk a little bit now about what some of the opportunities are to be involved at Ohio State. It truly, uh, the, the involvement environment here uh, is a huge part of the culture and just there's so much opportunity. It can be overwhelming. Uh, so I, I guess I do also want to offer the caveat that you do not have to do everything and you shouldn't try. Um, just pick a few things, a couple of things that are really meaningful to you uh, that will give you the chance to meet other people, explore an interest or a hobby that you have, uh, maybe understand your 
uh, major even more deeply uh, by doing some of these co-curricular things that are related uh, and you will not regret it. It is uh, a big, big part of the culture at Ohio State. So these are some of the ways that you can get involved. And I've also listed a, a website here, go.osu.edu slash get involved. that lays everything out, um, I think, in, a, in an easily digestible way and goes into far more detail than, than I will be able to with you this morning. But these are some of the, the most popular ways that students get involved. I won't go into detail about all of them, but I did want to touch base on a couple of them, including student organizations. So we have uh, a little more than 1,400 different registered student organizations on our Columbus campus. And uh, that's actually a, a, a huge stat that is good news. It, it means we have that many small communities that are each based on something really specific that the, the members of those groups have in common. And most student organizations are, I'd say, somewhere between 15 and 25 members. So it is a way to make the big campus seem a whole lot smaller, make connections with the people that share an interest with you. Um, and, and it really is about uh, two out of every three Ohio State students is involved in at least one student organization. So this is a directory you can visit. Functions like any other searchable database uh, out there. Put in some keywords and see what you find. There's a, a link to that directory here on the screen, go.osu.edu slash find a student org. You can also use the Ohio State app that Nicole mentioned earlier in the program. Uh, that is a way to get access to that student org directory as well. Uh, we hope that you'll spend a little bit of time between now and the, and the start of the spring semester doing some window shopping, looking for some options. Um, when you look a group up, you'll also get contact information for the, the leaders so you can reach out and find out how to join, links to their websites, all kinds of information about their purpose statements, when they meet, et cetera. Uh, so it really is a really useful database and I hope that you will use it. We also hope that you'll join us uh, during the uh, first couple of weeks of the semester for the spring involvement fair. We have two of these involvement fairs every year, one during the, uh, the days leading up to the fall semester and then one a few days after the start of the spring semester. The spring version is a little bit scaled down from the fall version. It is indoors and it takes place over the course of two evenings, January 15th and 16th, both at the Ohio Union. Uh, so we hope that you will mark that on your calendar. Just stop by. You can very casually scroll through the, the rooms that are set up with all these student organizations that will be standing at their tables, uh, excited to tell you about what they do and. Um, it's a good opportunity to interact in person with, with groups um, that you might think about joining. So really hope that you will consider coming out for that event and learning more about some of the opportunities. All right, next I wanna talk about uh, campus event scene. So one of the, uh, the, the huge advantages uh, that you get as an Ohio State student by paying um, one of your mandatory fees, your student activity fee, is access you get to free events planned by the Ohio Union Activities Board. I encourage you to follow OUAB um, through Instagram, at OUAB. That way you can get announcements uh, as they are made about some of the great events that are coming your way. They do about 200 to 250 different events every year. So there, there's something going on almost every day. And this is a group of students that plans events for fellow students. Again, they're all free of, of additional charge to you after you, know, you paid that activity fee. Um, some of the events feature celebrity performers, like uh, some of the folks that I have put on the screen here. These are all um, musicians and comedians and artists of all kinds who um, have been to campus to provide uh, an evening of entertainment and learning for, uh, for our students. So I want to mention this because um, when we have these, these like, talent-driven events with celebrities, um, you need to know the date of the event, but you also need to know the date of the ticket release. Because sometimes they're so popular, we're having them in spaces that won't accommodate everyone who'd like to come. So we have to regulate access through electronic tickets. And um, so don't want you to miss out on those events. That, that's why I recommend that you follow OUAB on Instagram so that you can find out about all those. You'll also uh, be able to access details in the, the university calendar of events that you can get through, get to on the Student Life app or on the Student Life website, as part of the Ohio State app. All right, next, uh, we have some other events beyond what OUAB plans that really sort of define the year. 
Uh, these are some of our most traditional events. They are uh, some of our most well attended and they are planned by lots of different groups, student organizations, campus departments. We call them our signature events and we invite you cordially uh, to any and all of them that appeal to you and, and fit into your schedule um, because you'll be joining us in the spring semester. Uh, know that uh, there are quite a few that happen in the spring and then also uh, when you're back for next fall semester, we have uh, a lot more of those to come. Uh, but they range from cultural celebrations, uh, international food uh, festivals, to uh, just celebrations of, of Buckeye spirits and um, you know, some of the innovation happening uh, through our, our student body as well. So really hope that you will uh, look for information about these. We we do our best to, to put the word out, but hopefully you'll also be looking for details so that you can join us, be part of these celebrations. And the more campus events you attend, the more you'll start recognizing people from classes and other places. And it, it really is a great way to have fun, be entertained, but also get acclimated and get connected with other people. All right. Also, that student activity fee that you pay, uh, it goes toward a program called DTIX, the Discount Ticket Program. This is um, a really, really affordable way to explore the city. You'll be living in the 14th largest city in the United States. With that comes some great opportunities for professional sports, great museums. We have an amazing zoo, all kinds of cultural celebrations, concerts and things, uh, special events happening throughout the city. And this discount ticket program uh, gives you access to those at about half price. There are standing discounts that you can just walk up to our information center at the Ohio Union every day and purchase a discounted ticket to like the Gateway Film Center, which is a movie theater very close to campus, $3 movie tickets. It is really hard to beat that price. Um, but then also special events happening throughout the year. For those, there's a little bit of a different process. Uh, again, because we have so many people interested in those, you would get on the, the discount tickets website, you would register for a lottery and then if your name is drawn randomly from all those who meet the deadline and express their interest then you are invited to come over to the union and purchase your ticket and uh, really really do recommend that if you're interested in things like uh, broadway musicals or uh, other types of performing arts ballet and symphony um, if you want to uh, even explore some of the places outside of central Ohio. We, we offer discounted tickets to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and Cedar Point and Kings Island. Uh, just some really good discounts. So wanted to mention that. Don't miss out on it. It, it really is um, a way to uh, expand your, um, your, your base here in Columbus and do so on a budget. All right. Next thing that I wanted to talk with you about is uh, the, the living room of the campus, uh, as we like to think of it, the Ohio Union. You've already heard reference to it a couple of times, uh, but this is, among other places, I, I do want to mention that if it's more convenient for you uh, to, to find a, a home base, maybe at the Hale Black Cultural Center or at one of our recreational centers, or maybe your college has a, a commons area, a lounge um, where you can you can study in between classes. But I want you to know the Ohio Union is, is here for you. It is, this is a student center. Uh, we want you to come here in between classes or uh, after classes to just relax, uh, maybe find a study spot here. We've got great dining opportunities. The events that I mentioned earlier are taking place in the Ohio Union in a, in a large proportion. Meetings of student organizations tend to occur here uh, more than anywhere else. So really want to encourage you to establish the Ohio Union or another physical location on the campus um, for you to spend some time and not feel like you need to go immediately home or, or just back to your car. Uh, this is um, a place where a lot of things happen. So uh, this next slide might be my most important one. If you are taking notes or um, screenshots today, this is uh, a list of all the places you can go to get information about these different types of involvement that I've been mentioning. This QR code will take you right to the Get Involved Guide. Um, but also, you know, I mentioned earlier, if you're looking for campus jobs, um, handshake.osu.edu is the place to do that. Uh, I've also listed some of the websites that you might need to learn more about how to join sororities and fraternities or intramural sports or some of the things that you might be interested in, in doing with some of those hours each week that you'll have available. All right. 
Next, I wanna talk about dining on campus. Um, for those of you living in the residence halls, there is a, 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 an expectation, a requirement actually, that you purchase a dining plan, so room and board. Um, if you are living in the halls, um, you must purchase a dining plan. But if you're not living in the residence halls, you still have the option of buying a dining plan. And I've put on the screen here next, a list of some of the campus dining locations. Um, not to expect you to remember them all, but really just to make the point that we have a lot of different styles of dining available. So your, your dining plan can get you access to all these. Um, you can also, if you don't wanna purchase a dining plan, um, you can pay cash and, and go to these places, but you get a discount. You know, when, you, when you purchase a dining plan, each visit to these places is discounted pretty significantly. So even if you don't think you're gonna use a dining plan a whole lot, there are dining plans that are made specifically for off-campus and commuter students that are smaller in nature, uh, but still a, a really good value. So I wanna recommend that you think about that. Um, but we have the, the, what we call the tradition style dining commons, kind of the all you care to eat. Um, we also have a lot of different grab and go uh, or fast casual options some food trucks on campus as well. There's a sit down table service operation called Sloopy's and we have uh, groceries and, and convenience store items available in a few different locations around campus. So if you are thinking about a dining plan, then some things to know, you can get all the pricing and all the options at dining.osu.edu. Um, and I also wanted to mention Grubhub. This is the app that we use, we partner with Grubhub uh, to allow you to order food. It makes uh, the whole ordering process incredibly convenient. You can put in your order and then it's ready for you to pick up as you walk from one classroom building to the next. Um, there are uh, also robots uh, roaming around our campus delivering food, um, sort of maximize convenience for you as well. Um, I did want to mention too that if you have special dietary needs, that you don't see addressed in the menus for our various dining locations, then we have a dietitian on staff. I've, I've listed Kara's contact information here uh, for you to reach out to just to make sure that you're going to have access to, to whatever you need. Um, but we do have a lot of vegan options, halal and kosher options um, incorporated into the, the dining um, menus at, at all these various locations. So we do want to be as accommodating as possible um, and the campus dining is actually quite good. Um, when you're visiting campus, if you if you haven't done this during a, a previous visit, I'd recommend that you you just try it out, see if it's something that you might like more of, and if so, then uh, you can you can purchase a dining plan. And there's a grace period at the beginning of each semester uh, where you can add a plan or or move it or change it. So they, they try to offer as much flexibility as they can. I really want to encourage you to look into that. Okay, the next thing that I want to talk about is accessing resources, and that includes uh, some long awaited information about the Buck ID program. So, your Buck ID is your key to getting into certain facilities, uh, including if you're living in a residence hall, but also maybe uh, classroom buildings and labs that you might need access to. You'll, you'll need your physical ID card to get into those. Um, that's how you access the dining services laundry facilities that are on campus. It's how you get into the recreational facilities. You'll need it for athletic events and for uh, campus events like the OUAB free events that I mentioned earlier. You can check out materials from the libraries, physical libraries with your card. And it kind of functions like a, a, a debit card in some ways. There are about 250 different restaurants, groceries, drugstores, even gas stations that take Buck ID as a form of payment. So what a lot of students do to just minimize their need for carrying a lot of different cards is to put a cash balance on the Buck ID card and then just use that. Um, some cases you get discounts for using your Buck ID card to make the purchase at, at these 250 locations. Um, and that's something that, that a family member can do remotely as well. It's, it's pretty easy to add cash to that Buck ID balance. If you happen to bank with Huntington Bank, um, then you can connect your Buck ID card to your actual checking account, and then it really does function like a debit card. Uh, you don't have to bank at Huntington, but they do have a partnership with Ohio State uh, that allows you to tie that checking account into the Buck ID card. So uh, it makes it pretty convenient. 
but how to get that card. Okay, so you need to be registered for classes. And once you've done that, um, then you've got a couple of different options. You can go to buckid.osu.edu. Um, they have a, a special page for new students. So it's that address slash orientation to get some more specific info. Um, but you can submit a photo online. And then when you're on campus, maybe you won't get here until January uh, when, you, when you're moving in. Um, at that point, you can stop by their office, which is on the third floor of the Ohio Union, and your card will be ready for you to pick up. Another option that you have is to come physically into the Buck ID office and allow them to take your picture on site, print your card on site. Uh, but uh, just know that at the beginning of the semester, the, the uh, wait time is a little bit longer because there are a lot of students who choose to, to go about it that way. Um, so if you if you want to take the route of uploading your photo ahead of time, that might save you a little bit of time um, and make it a bit more convenient. Uh, but again, the key is that you must be registered for classes before you come in to pick up your ID. One other note about this, if all of your classes are virtual, if you are entirely um, online for your classes, then you still have access to a digital version of your Buck ID, um, which you can access on the Ohio State app. So that's a, another, if you should need to prove that you are a student uh, for any reason, you would be able to do that with your uh, digital card ID. Okay. Um, I guess the last thing that I wanted to share uh, as we go to the next slide here is that um, <clears throat> we are committed uh, at Ohio State to creating an environment where absolutely everyone in our community and find community and feel a strong sense of belonging. So regardless of your viewpoints, your identities, your life experiences, uh, chances are pretty good that someone with an opinion different than yours will express that perspective either inside or outside of the classroom. You may do that as well. When that happens, you certainly do not have to agree, but uh, we all have to respect each other and everyone's right to express that opinion. So We'd encourage you to take a look at some of the resources that we have created for the campus related to freedom of expression. You can use this QR code or, or go to freedomofexpression.osu.edu. There you can find out more about our campus free speech policy, uh, different support resources, and a lot more. Uh, we, we really do work hard to foster freedom of expression for everyone. And we are uh, very committed, as we hope you are as well, uh, to keeping Ohio State free from harassment and discrimination of all kinds. Um, so that's that's a huge priority, and we want to make sure that you learned about some resources here at your orientation. Okay, so finally, as I end my time with you, studentlife.osu.edu is, uh, I think, a really important site to bookmark as you're just sort of making a list of the resources that you're going to need not just as you prepare to join uh, the community, but once you have gotten here, uh, this can continue to be a good resource. This is a hub that'll get you to all of the different departments uh, that provide resources for your life outside the classroom. There is also on this site uh, an orientation page that will um, give you some resources related to some of the different categories of, of uh, living on campus or, or off campus. So. There are some brief videos there, most of them two to three minutes, that touch on things like financial wellness or safety, or things that um, might be on your minds that uh, we didn't get to during this program today. So just wanna encourage you to visit that site, and see if some of those resources would be helpful to you. And um, hopefully you will be set up for success when you get here in January. So with that, I appreciate your time and attention. I'll turn things back over to Nicole unless there are any questions for me. Uh, I think questions are getting responded to as quickly as possible through our Q&A and through our chat. So I am going to go ahead and let folks know about next steps as we wrap up here. So again, you your second part of your orientation program this week um, is that academic advising session or that ac academic advising appointment. And you're going to follow those instructions communicated to you by the academic advisors for your college or your major. And again, if you're not sure of that, hopefully you've already reached out to us at orientation at osu.edu. And we are in the process of getting you connected with who you need to be uh, meeting with this week to 
get registered for classes. Um, keep an eye on those to-do items that you may have in your Buckeye Link page and get those resolved um, or work on getting those resolved before the start of classes. Um, I realize some of you are still waiting for those college transcripts because you are in the middle of classes right now. Um, and so that can be something that you take care of later on in December. Um, and then last but not least, to go ahead and give us some feedback on this program, um, communication ahead of time, during, throughout, um, at go.osu.edu slash orientation eval. We will send that as a follow-up request as well when we send out the link to this um, presentation recording. Um, if you do have any other questions or concerns, our email is orientation at osu.edu. You can also get a hold of us at 614-292-4161. Um, and this is just one more plug. If you joined using a phone number today, um, if you can go ahead and email us sometime in the next couple of days at that orientation at osu.edu, let us know who you are and the phone number that you use to access this. Um, and with that, unless you have any other questions, um, you are free to go ahead and log off of this webinar. We will stick around for anyone who has those lingering questions, um, but I am going to ask that if you don't have any questions that you go ahead and log off so we can keep track of who we still need to serve. Thanks so much, folks. All right. Once again, if you are still online, it probably means you're putting a question in the chat or the Q&A. Otherwise, we're going to ask that you go ahead and log off at this point um, so that we can make sure that we are getting folks served in the way that they need to be served. All right, one more time. If you are still on the call at this point, it be is because you have some sort of question that you are waiting to get answered either in that Q&A or in that chat. If not, go ahead and log off at this point so we can keep track of who we still need to be assisting. Um, and we will be wrapping up this webinar in the next couple of minutes.